of the book of Psalms. Read chapter 1 of the book of <laughs> Psalms, and uh, then we're going to discuss it. How blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He will be like a tree firmly planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. And in whatever he does, he prospers. The wicked are not so, but they are like chaff, which the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Okay. The, um, th this first chapter starts off in a very good way as far as understanding what's important. The contrast that is being made here is either following along with the wicked or following along with the righteous. Those are, those are two major points that are made. And I found out, by the way, in preparation for, the, for, this, for this study, th not something where I've studied Psalm 1 before. I've, I'm, I'm working with some stuff on when I've studied Psalm 1 before. But in this particular study, I learned something new. Getting ready for today, I learned something new that I'll be interested in sharing with you all. But notice how it starts out. Notice the, the three stands or body positions mentioned for the blessed man. Okay, and by the way, do you recognize this is another beatitude in the Bible? We talk, sure. we, what's that? What you, you say? Oh, you said yeah, uh, yeah, the, yeah. yeah the, this this is, this starts out much like you see in the beatitudes. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they mm -hmm. for they shall be called children of God. Blessed are the poor in spirit, okay, for they shall see heaven. You know uh, the, the, those ideas. Well, blessed is the man. Blessed is the man who, who what, according to this one? Who doesn't walk with, stand with, or sit with those who are wicked. Yes. Notice the progression. Notice, notice how we oftentimes will enter into sin. No, not, a, yeah. Ho hopefully we will, we will stop at the first part. Notice the first thing he says. Blessed is the man who, who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, all right? We all have people in the world that are, that are very happy to do what we're very happy to do, and that is to tell people how they ought to live, what they ought to do in a given situation, to give counsel, okay? It's a, a Solomon makes it clear, it's a foolish man who won't listen to counsel. But the problem is, is where do you get your counsel from? All right. Um, you don't want to go for counsel. You don't want to go for counsel to someone who is a convicted murderer, an unrepentant murderer, and ask him how to treat people. How should I treat people? What do you think? You know, <laughs> what kind of counsel do you think that man's going to give you? Just kill him. Yeah, yeah, kill him. It takes care of my problems all the time. There you go. You know, um, I, I don't have problems with people. They recognize what I'm going to do with them. You know. Yeah, that might be that might be the counsel he gives um, if he lives if he if he gives counsel by the way he lives that might very well be counsel that he gives and so and so right off the bat people are willing to help you with your troubles now mind you they're not doing it because they want to make you wicked oftentimes big world I'm sure there's people out there that do do that. But instead, they're telling you what they think is right. And by the way, sometimes those in the world do have the right thing to tell you. They will tell you something that is correct in the way to live. Not everyone is 100% wicked, okay? Even among the wicked, not everyone is 100% wicked. So you can perhaps get good counsel from those who are outside the the word of God from those who are, don't care about what God has to say. Okay. But the one who, who, who walks in the council, what's that idea of walk mean? Walking is with living. Yeah. 
uh, he said was walking as, as living with in yeah. close to or in association with in some way. Exactly. So, so, so the the idea being given here is is you're continuing in it. Remember what John mm -hmm. says in First John: Walk in the light as He is in the light, and the blood of Jesus Christ shall cleanse cleanse you from all sin. God is light; in Him is no darkness. All right. If we walk in the light as He is in the light, we'll be cleansed from all sin. That idea of walking there is speaking about living that way. Go ahead, Bob. The uh, the King James uses walketh. The ETH ending. Excellent, excellent. There's there's several ETH endings in this this passage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the idea of walk, walk, walketh, standeth, and sitteth are both. Mm -hmm. all, all those have ETH endings, which means you stay there. You're there, and you continue there. So it's not it's not just a one time action. Again, sometimes people in the world can give you good advice. But following their advice needs to be because it matches up with what God's word says. It matches up that's with how, good advice. That's why we need to know what the word says. Yeah, so we can compare it and know what advice to follow. You know, and, and know, know it, what to test. Yeah. Test the spirits, in other words. Amen. Amen. But the progression, okay, you start out walking in the council. Now, look at the next one nor the one who stands in the path of sinners. Notice the, notice the position now. He's been walking along. He comes to a stop. He stands right there. He's not moving. At least if you're moving, there's a possibility you, move, you might move out of that path. But now that he is standing there, um, he's getting to get ready to talk about a tree firmly planted by the streams of water. Well, your feet are now possibly planted in that place to stay. You, you are stopping and you obviously, it would seem, you're comfortable in that position you're in, at least at the moment, to stand there, all right? Now, I, I wanna make a very, very good point here. There is a time that Christians should be around, must be around sinful people. Mm -hmm. If we are going to help others to find the truth, we cannot just board ourselves up inside our church buildings and never go out and see people in the world. Jesus Christ was criticized because he ate with sinners. Well, what did Jesus Christ do while he was eating with sinners? Teaching. Yes, he was there teaching them. He was there trying to draw them closer to him. He was trying to get them in a, in a situation where they were ready to hear from him. All right. Now, go and be with them and sin with them? No, Jesus Christ did not do that. But the idea of the idea of going there and being with them to teach them, this is given the idea of you are standing in the path of the sinners. You, in other words, you're in the midst of sin yourself and you've come to a stop. Okay. We can be in the world, but not of the world. Exactly. And that's what we are, Christians are required to be. Um, the third thing, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. Now look at what he's saying. The person was walking, following advice from those in the world. Then he comes to a stop right in the path, obviously not willing to leave. Now he sits down, and, and whose seat is he sitting in? With the, with the, with the sinful. Yeah, well, now mine says scoffer. Yours doesn't have scoffer there? Scoffer, in the seat of scoffers? Yeah. Okay. Scoffers. Yeah. Now, well, tell me what a scoffer is. Mocker. A mocker. Normally, well, not normally, when speaking of it in the Bible, scoffing who? Well, that would be that would be the word of Christ. Yeah, scoffing at God's way, at his word, at Christ, at people who follow Christ. However you want to say that, but they're individuals who are mocking making fun of, ridiculing the way of God. Notice the progression of this individual. He starts off following their counsel, then he stops and stands in their way, in the way they are, then he sit, sits down and now he himself is a mocker, is a scoffer. Is, is one who derides the, any other way of life, any other way of being than the way that I am in my wickedness is now to be made fun of. 
This is the progression. And this is the concern. This is why oftentimes parents will tell their children, be careful who your friends are. They will change you. They will, you will become like them. Um, uh, or uh, sometimes when children get a little bit older, you know, p parents will tell them when they come of dating age, don't date someone that you're not willing to be married to one day. Okay, that's what you should be seeking for. Oh, he's a cool guy, and I and, and we have a lot of fun together, and so we're going to go... I, I doubt kids use the word study these days, do they? I'm probably using the... You know, we're, but we're going to be connected for a while, all right? And so however, however you say that, we're, we're going to be an item. We're going to be a thing. I'm still... I'm sure I'm still using words that are just showing my age. But, you know, that idea of you warn them. No, you got to be careful. Consider who you want to be with the rest of your life is an idea. Uh, you know, why? Because they will affect you. Christian. Bad company. Corrupts. Bad company. Good. Creates. Corrupts. The, the, the corruptness, yeah. Yeah. Corrupts good morals. That's right. Bad company good corrupts morals. good morals. That's exactly the, right. The words left. That's exactly right. So, so, so notice, notice the progression. It's the progression that we warn our kids about. Now, notice also this, this beatitude Blessed is, this beatitude's in the negative, all right? He's saying, blessed is the man who isn't this way. Why is he blessed? Verse two, for, uh, but, I'm sorry, not why he is blessed. We'll see that in verse three. Instead of walking in the, by the counsel of the wicked, standing in the path of sinners, and then finally being in the seat of scoffers, his delight, the blessed man, is in the law of the Lord. Instead of the counsel of the wicked, he is looking towards the law of the Lord, God's word. What would God have me do? Not what does the world have me do? And in his law, he meditates day and night. Where are you going to get your counsel? You're going to get it from God's word. Meditate on it. What is it saying? What does it mean to me? How do I apply this to my lives? Hmm, what we're doing in this Bible study. Not just getting information, but we want to meditate on it. What is it saying? And this meditation is not during just a 30-minute Bible study. This meditation needs to be, we're sitting there and working it out. How does this apply to me in my life after I've studied it? How do I need to follow it? Now, in verse 3, here's the reason for the blessing. He will be like a tree firmly planted by streams of water. Uh, let me make a comment about that phrase. I used to live in Colorado. Uh, people all, in fact, I've got, I own a house in Colorado. People will say, oh, you own a house in Colorado. What a beautiful state that is. Well, yeah, if you get up in the mountains, it's pretty pretty. Right now, I live in the part that looks like Kansas. You know, the, the eastern <laughs> side of it. Not anything bad to say about Kansas, okay? But, but it, or Oklahoma, for you Oklahoma, people in Oklahoma there. But, but it isn't the mountains of Colorado. It's brown and dry. And people are amazed when they come from that part of Colorado into the eastern part of the states where we live right now here in West Virginia. They're, they say, wow, it's so green. And look at everyone's lawns. The lawns are so green. Everyone waters their lawns every day. And, you know, because you'd have to do that in Colorado to have your lawns that way, to make to have it be so pretty. People would put in-ground sprinkler systems in order to be able to water the lawns. How often do you water your lawn, Bob? God takes care of that. <laughs> yes. Now, Denny might need to water his lawn right now. <laughs> At times, he's trying to grow grass on a new piece of property. All right. But once that grass takes set, how often are you gonna how often are you gonna water that grass, Denny? <laughs> I'm not going to. I love the way Bob said it. God does that. You know? I oftentimes tell Julie that about the dishes in the drainer. You know, don't need to dry the, <laughs> don't need to dry those. God will dry those, you know, just, just leave them alone. You know? But it's the same way with watering. We don't water our grass, but in Colorado, do you know where you're gonna see a tree in Colorado? by a creek or in someone's yard where it's watered. Why? Because the roots, you're not going to have any water. It's going to die. Here he says, the one who delights in God's law will be like a tree firmly planted by the streams of water. Its roots are going to be able to go deep 
They're going to be able to draw from that water. They're going to get the nutrients they need. They're going to be a strong tree. And when the winds of life come up, big deal. Not a problem. Storms, uh, disease, anything can come. And it's strong and ready to face it more than any, uh, any tree in a yard in Colorado that the owner stops watering. It's going to die. It's going to, it's going to suffer. Yeah. Unless it's got some really deep roots that it can go down and tap into the deep, into the, a deep uh, water table, it's going to die. Okay. Normally, notice, yeah. notice too, Albert, the, the positive action involved in this. Mm -hmm. It's planted there purposely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It is no accident when one becomes strong and able in the word. Yeah. It is practiced. It is planted. Right. And there, there from it gets its life. Yeah. Yeah. And it will, and it will live. This is showing that when we draw from God's word, we will be strong. When the winds mm -hmm. of life come on us, uh, Jesus told a, 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 a illustration on this, didn't he? The house is built on the, on the foundation. When the storms come, it stands. No big deal. The house that's built on, on loose soil, the storms come, it's destroyed there at the end of Matthew chapter 7. Okay? So, so the same thing with the tree planted by the, by the waters. It's able to draw uh, on the word of God, the spiritual tree that's planted by the spiritual waters of God is able to draw on it, to be strong, to be able to stand anything that life brings to it. Okay? Verse 4, but the wicked are not so. Uh, about, let, let me make a comment on one thing in verse 3. I'm sorry. It yields its fruit in every season. You know, in other words, we produce for God that idea you can, we, we can study on that some other time. You can look at, you can look at what it says about uh, the parable of the vine yielding fruit for God. Or you can look at the fruit of the Spirit, okay, in, in, in Galatians chapter 5. We've studied somewhat on that recently, so I don't want to go too deep into that. When it says uh, its leaf doesn't wither, in other words, it's going to face life and be strong. But the last part, whatever he does, he prospers. Be careful with that. There's a lot of poor people out there that are depend on God. Some people might want to sit there and say, if you're a Christian, that means you're going to be prosperous materially. No, you got, you got, you literally got one particular big preacher out there who tends to say that a Christian is going to be rich, is going to prosper. No, that's not true. Jesus Christ was not rich, and he and he was the most godly individual ever to walk this earth. So godliness, depending on the strength of God, is not going to make you rich physically. You might be rich physically, but, but that's not the prospering it's talking about here. This is talking about prospering spiritually, prospering in what's really important, laying up treasures in heaven, if you want to put it that way. But there's where your prospering is going to be. Okay. Now, to get into what I wanted to say, the wicked are not like that. you got to draw it to a close. We're getting close to... Our time period. The wicked are not so are not like that, but they are like chaff which the wind drives away. Whereas this tree is going to stand up against the winds. The wicked are like chaff; they have no root. They are just laying laying there on the ground, and the wind can just blow them away. All right, they'll go. Chaff will go whichever way the wind takes it. That's the way the wicked are. The winds of life, the problems of life. The desires of life, the, the sins of life, they're going to go whichever way life takes them. They're not going to follow. They're not going to stand firm for God. Okay. Therefore, because they'll go whichever way the world takes them, therefore the wicked will not stand, as opposed to that tree which will stand in life, the wicked will not stand in the judgment. All right. Now, on judgment day, what is every knee going to do? It's going to bow. It's going to bow. Uh, I imagine for the wicked, it's going to be coming down on your face eventually. But the idea is going to be you're going to realize your position before God. But this standing also gives the idea of being able to face judgment. 
You will not stand in the judgment if you're wicked. People think they're going to come there and defend themselves before God. They're going to prove God he was wrong. They're going to fight God. No. You're not going to be able to stand in judgment. You're not going to have a, a foot, a leg to stand on about why it was okay for you to do what you did and not accept God. You won't be able to stand if you're wicked. Now, the next phrase he says is the one that I, I learned something more here. And that's good. The Bible keeps on giving. Look at what it says. Nor, in this translation, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. Does everyone have something like that? Sinners in, in the a con congregation. Congregation. In the congregation of the righteous, yeah. King James. Yeah, yeah. That's the two translations I have here. The old the new the New American Standard and the ESV both have either assembly or congregation. Guess what word this could be? I found that out when I was checking this out in the old Septuagint because there was a little bit of a, of a controversy in what, what word was here. Uh, or, or no, 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 no. I went and checked it out because I was wondering if this is going to be the word ekklesia, uh, the Greek word ekklesia, which, mean, which means the called out. Well, it, it is an ekklesia. So, but in looking at that, I found out the word could mean the counsel of the righteous. The Hebrew word is, you know how like in English, P-O-L-I-S-H. Do I mean polish or Polish? I don't know. I don't even see the context of what you're talking about. I don't know if that word can mean either one. Hebrew word here. It can mean the assembly. And, uh, and so it could be in the congregation to me among God's people. That's a true statement. Nothing wrong with that idea. Or it could mean the counsel of the righteous. Go all the way back up to verse one again. How blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. Well, the one who is wicked will not, will not be in the counsel of the righteous, will not follow the counsel of the righteous. That's not his way of doing things. He won't listen to good advice. Either one of those is true, okay? And I, I, I want to do a little bit more study of that Hebrew word, because like I said, I went to the Septuagint, and the Septuagint makes it clear that it could mean counsel. And then when I went to the Hebrew word, the Hebrew word could mean either one. So I want to look at it a little bit more and see which one it, it is. It's going to be further study for me. But either one's a true statement. All right. But let's say it's saying nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. You will not be among God's people. You will not. He they will not be them. among them. What's that? They don't want to be. They don't want to be. They want. They, yeah, there's a good point. They don't want to be. And on judgment day, you're going to wish you were and you won't be. Yeah. Another thought, too, Albert, that goes along with what you uh, what you learned with this one, and, and it's good. I appreciate that. But the fact that their standpoint, their ideas, their feelings, their thoughts will not compare to that of a of a congregation. Amen. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. It it, it won't be it, it won't be the same. It won't be. Uh, yeah, exactly. Very good. All that are at, wrapped up in there. And here's the reason. Why won't he stand in, the, in judgment? Why won't that sinner be with God's people? For the Lord knows the way of the righteous. And this might be one of the reasons why they threw the word assembly in there, to be among God's people. Because of the, mm -hmm. of the reason is the Lord knows the way of the righteous. All right, He's not going to be able to be among them because God's going to know who his sheep are and who are not. God's going to know. Remember that one parable of Jesus? Jesus is where the weeds were sown into uh, a field. Um, uh, 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 tares were sown in to good to good veg, uh, of good garden. Yeah. Well, the Lord will know which is the tares and which is the which is the true food. He will notice the difference. The Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. There is no question. There is no wondering. There is no, there is no possibility of getting past God. God won't notice you going into his eternity. He won't see it. You'll kind of be in the crowd going. No. He knows. He knows what you are doing on this earth. We say that we say this about 
uh, Santa Claus with our little children. He knows when you are sleeping. He knows when you're awake. He knows if you've been bad or good, be good for goodness sake. Now that's something we tell our children about Santa Claus, okay? Um, that's a true statement about God. That's a true statement you know, about God. I, I often think of Hebrews 4.12 mm -hmm. in this respect, in that the, that the word actually discerns the thoughts and intents of the heart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. He knows what we're thinking. Knows exactly what we're thinking. And yes. that thinking will be judged with his word. What's that, honey? And why. And why we're thinking it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He knows what we're thinking and why we're thinking. Very good. Any other comments on chapter one? Tomorrow we'll get we'll do Psalm 23. And I may want to come back eventually and do Psalm 2. I like Psalm 2 as well. But uh, uh, tomorrow, let's, let's go ahead and do Psalm 23. That's a wonderful passage. As I said, mm -hmm. most people have it memorized. Many people will use it as a prayer. But what it is, is a wonderful, comforting teaching that we need in our lives. You know, thinking about that, we, I know we'll be probably get into that tomorrow, mm -hmm. but that, that is probably one of the most used psalms at funerals. Yeah. But I don't, I don't think of it as a, as a funeral. I think of it more as a way of life. Yeah. I understand what you're saying. I understand what you're saying. Denny, would you close us in prayer, please? He's chopping. Your mic is off, Denny. Yeah, got it. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Dear God in heaven, we thank you so much, dear God, for giving us this opportunity to open your word. We pray as we studied your word today, dear God, that uh, we can put it into our minds that into our lives as we go out into the world and serve you. We thank you, dear Jesus, for coming to this earth and dying for us and for giving us this word that we can have a guide to follow. We thank you, dear God, for Brother Albert and, and uh, his ability to bring it to us as he does. And, and we thank you so much for bringing him and Julie and all the, the Elfin's congregation. Thank you, dear God. Be with us today and be with the sick. Bless them to be your will. Of course, through Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you all. I appreciate everyone being here.